of age, he already had the ambition to make some money, driven by his will for food and survival. He was known to be naughty and stubborn, but on reflection, his behaviour was probably misinterpreted by the environment of the times and the situation that such a young child was put through. Seeing his mother taken away at the age of five and growing up without motherly love and care in a difficult world, something we could never imagine. We think these events and circumstances are evidence of Papa playing his hand. Though terrible and unimaginable, have shaped Papa into the man he is today. Papa and Liz's stories of war-torn despair and ultimate salvation as children through to adulthood are numerous and common amongst us. And these experiences have embodied them as people, husbands, fathers, grandfathers, and friends, which is truly amazing. However, a speech about Papa would never be complete without attributing one of the cards life has handed him. And that would be his wife, our grandmother, Nana. Now all of us endure hardships, challenges, and successes at various levels. But how many of us can honestly and accurately describe our life as one in which our eventual path superseded our most wildest fantasy? While David, Debbie and myself never went through the struggle of survival in the way that Dad has, perhaps the most important lesson we've learned from him is the importance of that struggle. That with hard work, anything can be achieved and that we need to appreciate everything we have and have perspective not to take anything for granted. I remember once when Dad got a new car. It was all fresh and shiny, and he described to me how much he loves getting into that car every morning. When I asked him why, was it the 12 cylinders, the leather seats, the electronic dashboard? He said that the greatest thing about this car is that every day when I get into it, it reminds me of where I came from and where I could never imagine I could get to, and that with hard work, anything is possible. We used to have to wash those cars almost every weekend growing up. We would hand wash them inside and out, dry and vacuum. I never much liked that hard work on a Sunday morning, but somewhere deep down I knew that this was Dad's way of educating. Not, not, not being one to deliver lectures, but rather say, pick up a sponge, clean and scrub and dry and polish and know that nothing worthwhile comes easy. Life is about give and take and always nurture what you create. Dad. <coughs> Dad was never the studious, that studious, and he decided to drop out of school at grade eight and not commencing high school. And unlike his brother who continued to finish school and later on university, Dad was hungry to work and earn, and he became an apprentice fitter and turner. In those years, this is in hungry years, factory workers lived, li left home and lived in a factory dormitory. Dad worked initially in a train manufacturing plant and later in a motorcycle assembly plant. Although life had some level of normality, the country was in economic and social upheaval. Home life was not great, and Dad and his brother decided that the world was their oyster and their journey from Hungary in 1956 as a 17 and a 19 year old kids led them across Europe to the UK and eventually bound to Australia. And that's a story in itself. <coughs> when I was thinking about how to sum up Dad's 80 years, what struck me was how incredible life can be for someone who has undergone such massive, massive changes from childhood to adulthood to their later years. In my generation, most of us spend our lives in more or less similar circumstances, usually also within a few kilometre radius of where we were born. But in Dad's generation, realities beyond people's control led them to having, to having to be masters of change, and their journeys can be seen as a series of lessons about how to adapt to incredibly different circumstances. So too, Dad's life can be seen as a history lesson about the tragic fate of European Jewry in World War II, life in post-war Budapest, of orphan children following the war, the 1956 Hungarian Revolution, waves of immigration escaping Europe in the 50s, seeking new homes and cities ranging from London to Melbourne, and how Australia has served as a country of opportunity for those willing to work hard and make their mark to put all their energy into creating a new life for themselves and their families. When Dad met Mum, got married and took on the responsibility of supporting a wife and putting a roof over their head and then children and their family, my Dad was relentless to ensure that we could, he could provide. In the early years, Dad would have his day job in the factory and then after hours doing jobs on mechanical repairs on cars. At night, after hours in the driveway in their house, Dad would be under a car while Mum handed him the tools. You can just imagine Dad in his greasy white singlet and Mum handing him a wrench while he calls for it. <laughs> Metaphorically, this has been their partnership for almost 55 years. Inseparable, devoted to each other's endeavours, projects and ventures, working to collab together collaboratively and supportively. 
Mum handing him the tools and Dad executing the job in the most methodical and efficient way. But today, <coughs> this level of teamwork carries on in the home too. Dad, I can safely say that I speak on behalf of myself, Ellie and Debbie, and our respective families, that for everything you do for us, thank you for everything you do for us, your generosity, your support, your unequivocal love, your patience and tolerance, with all the problems and difficulties and the sugars and trials and tribulations that form part of our life as children and as, and as our current lives as adults. We're always there, you're always there as a protective wall and a strength, a sounding board, a friend and a counsellor, but most important, a father. We'd like to conclude with a word of thanks to you, Dad, on behalf of all those here today and others that couldn't make it, for the generosity and kindness that you've shown to so many of us, for the wisdom and cool-headedness that we've had the privilege of receiving from you, and as David said, on behalf of the three of us, our endless, our endless gratitude for everything that you've done and continue to do for, for providing us with every opportunity without conditions and for teaching us how to live life as a mensch. Dad, we love you. May you be healthy and happy and continue to enjoy life. Sharing more simples, holidays, events and occasions with your children, your grandchildren and extended family. Thank you, Dad. We love you. Amen. Hey, 
Yeah.